Hello everyone, John Joker 12 back here again with another video, and today I have something that I've been talking about for several videos back now, which is John Joker 12's top five picks. I'm starting a new segment on my channel where I basically give you my general thoughts on top five topic of the day. Starting off the top five picks, uh, I have Dragon Ball Z. I have a lot of actual Dragon Ball Z top five pick videos. That's mostly due to the fact that I have, if you're aware of me, then you already know that I can talk about Dragon Ball Z for a long period of time. But just to shorten this, and to shorten like the amount of videos I can do, I'm basically just going to, most of my top 5 picks are Dragon Ball Z related, just to give you a heads up. Mostly so I don't have to make an individual video about every specific topic uh, in question. So, But to get this started... This video is my top 5 favorite slash best Dragon Ball Z movies. They've made 14, I think, 14 Dragon Ball Z films. And I'm going to give you my top 5 and why. And give you several reasons as to why they made my top 5. And just give you a couple of honorable mentions that didn't get into the list. But let's get this started already. At coming up at number 5, I have to give it up to Battle of Gods. And I know what you're saying. What the fuck are you talking about, John? Like, you're stupid. Battle of Gods is the best Dragon Ball Z that they ever did. You're stupid. I'm get, I get where you're coming from. Dra Battle of Gods is a great movie. It's an awesome Dragon Ball Z movie. But it's not my favorite by any means. I mean, it's amazing and I love it. Battle of Gods is awesome. And if you're an anime fan, or especially a Dragon Ball fan, then it's definitely a movie you need to check out. Mostly due to the fact that it has two big things going for it. Which is A, the fact that Toriyama, the creator of fucking Dragon Ball, had basically everything to do with it. And two, it's canon. It's a part of the actual Dragon Ball Z storyline. So, of course, it's something that I appreciate and love, but... Because it has a lot of inaccuracies and kind of like just what the fuck, man, kind of moments in this movie, and plus the disappointment of Super Saiyan God, I, I it's I, I I just had to put it at five. I was gonna say like oh maybe a number two, number one, but no, it's a number five. It's just it's definitely great. It's a great movie, just not my top. pick. But let's move on. Going to number four, I have to say it has to be Tree of Might. Tree of Might is just an awesome, badass Dragon Ball Z movie. And it just, it's basically, once again, another one of those stories of like, oh, an enemy from space comes down and is pissed off at Goku and wants to take over the world to destroy it. Very self-explanatory storyline to this movie. But it's a really fucking awesome movie when you watch it. It's, it's old, but it's a good old. It's one of those really good old, like, Dragon Ball Z stuff that you have to really reach and get into. And it's really fucking awesome. But the, a quick synopsis is, um, Turles, the main bad guy, comes down to Earth, wants to use Earth's resources to grow the Tree of Might, which grows this fruit that gives the holder ultimate power and strength. That's basically the plot, and Goku obviously doesn't like that, and tries to kick his ass, and all hell ensues. It's just an awesome movie, and it's definitely a good watch for anybody. And I just love the character of Turles. Turles is awesome. I, I, I know the, the creators of the movie and directors wanted, created the character. His sole purpose was because he was um, a definitive what-if story. Turles, what-if character. Because they wanted to be like, okay, this is what Goku would have been if he became Kakarot and never met Gohan and just destroyed the Earth. He would have been Turles. And I get that, but ever since the end of the movie, there's been lots of speculation as to who Turles really is to Goku. Is he his brother? Are they related? Are they... Is he really just a distant Saiyan that somehow looks like him? Which just is stupid to me. I know they said that in one of the English dubs, but that's just a retarded theory to me. That's just stupid. It's kind of racist, too, when you think about it really hard. But that's besides the point. Anyways... Uh, I, I, just to end this specific topic, I, I personally think Turles is related to Goku, but he's not his brother. He's possibly an uncle. I, I say that mostly due to the fact because 
Um, previously, Toriyama stated that Bardock does have siblings, but he probably doesn't know or don't care. So, that, auto that automatically makes me think that, oh, maybe it's possible that Turles is related, but he doesn't know or don't care. But besides that, let's move on. Coming up at number three, Cooler's Revenge. Cooler's Revenge is just an awesome, badass movie. And it's, and it's one of the movies that I love mostly due to the music. A lot of people have problems with Funimation's choices in music, specifically in the anime, because they prefer the Japanese. I have no, no fault with the Japanese music. I don't hate the Japanese music. I don't despise it by any means, but I prefer the American music when it comes to the movies. I don't know why, I just do. Like, when it comes to the anime, for instance, I can take both. Like, it doesn't hurt me that bad. Like, the Japanese or the English, eh, I'll take them both. I don't really care. I like them both equally. But when it comes to the movies, I prefer, um... I just prefer the English music. It's just more badass. And Cool Cooler's Revenge, like Lord Slug, they really started to bring like heavier metal bands, you know, which is kind of like at this point kind of cliche because if you go on YouTube, like there's probably like a thousand AMVs of like straight up heavy metal music for Dragon Ball Z AMVs. But at the time, it's really it was really badass. Like to see like Goku become a Super Saiyan and have like fucking badass music. Like fuck yes. You know, and plus, Cooler's Revenge also has like the coolest Goku Super Saiyan transformation I ever seen. Even more cool design-wise than how he transforms in the anime first appearance. It's just awesome and cool. It's just a badass movie, and if you definitely, you just, it just definitely deserves a watch. Okay, excluding that, let's get into number two, the uh, big number two. I know it sounds disgusting, but you know. Anyways, number two, my top f number two pick is Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan. I know it was going to reach in there somewhere. It just had to be. Cool. It's just, Cooler's Revenge is awesome, but Broly is way more badass. Broly is just fucking awesome. He's, he's like, Broly is a what-if story, and he's definitely a good fan-deserved character he's like he's like a boss level in a video game like now it's time to beat the ultimate super saiyan you know it's like that's what broly is he's the legend he's the legendary super saiyan which doesn't make any sense but is awesome it's definitely a good movie specifically for video game fans hardcore video game fans and hardcore anime slash Dragon Ball Z fans. It's just an awesome movie. It's very fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but when it comes into the action, of course, and with the character of Broly, they definitely get very sick and sadistic, seeing as how Broly probably marks the first time we see a villain who's truly psychotic and crazy, because previously to that, all the villains, because this is prior to Boo, all the villains are either scientists, machine created creations, or just really like psych psycho like I wouldn't say psychotic, but really angry, pissed off alien warlords. You know, they're just that's what the villains were previously. Broly marks the first psychotic villain who just doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't care. He just wants to destroy things every second of the day and doesn't care who gets hurt he kills his own father like that's some serious star wars darth vader shit he kills his own fucking father in this fucking movie that's how badass this movie is and i know a lot of people are like oh bro he's overrated he's stupid he sucks he's overrated i don't like him he doesn't even talk he says kakarot like every five seconds he's worse than vegeta i get it but broly's fucking awesome and broly the legendary super saiyan is a fucking awesome movie and I just had to put it. It's just awesome. It's that fucking cool. But before I get into my number one, let's get. I want to give some honorable mentions that didn't get into the list before I reveal my number one pick. First off, Dead Zone. Dead Zone is awesome movie. It's the first Dragon Ball Z movie that got a actual audience. 
you know, I wouldn't say it didn't get an audience, but I mean, like, actually was shown to an audience because, you know, then it would just be counted as a special. But besides my nonsense rambling, Dead Zone is just an awesome, awesome story, and it's just well-directed. It's just one of those really cool Dragon Ball Z movie stories. And it's like one of the only ones that I can actually consider, other than Tree of Might and several others, that is canon. A lot of people have a lot of problems with the movies because they're not canon. But when you watch Dead Zone, it kind of feels canon. It, it, it's never stated as if it were. But I don't know. I just really like it to the point where it's like I can take it serious as a part of the original storyline. You know, it's just really good. It's that fucking good. I mean, it's definitely prior to the Saiyans. It's definitely prior to Gohan's training. You know, it's definitely prior to Go Goku trusting in Piccolo to fight together. You know, because... And, and plus, it, it marks Goku, like, last being used, like, the power pole. And I, I don't know, I just really love it when Goku used the power pole. It's just a badass weapon. I know it's, inf it, I know it's inferior to, like, his strength that he acquires later on in the series. But it's just an awesome weapon that I wish he could just have for show. Just for show, like... Yeah, I just have it just for show, you know, like, Batman's gauntlets. You never see them use them that much, but they're just there for show. They're cool. Next up, Lord Slug. Lord Slug is an awesome, badass movie, and the character's really cool. And I also like it that they gave a little bit more mythology to Piccolo's race than, than the Namekians, because just like the Saiyans, the Namekians are just awesome, cool creatures. They're awesome aliens, and Lord Slug is a really awesome villain. And I think it was, like, a good choice to make him Namekian. And... Just so on like that, um, the return of Cooler, really awesome. awesome. I know Path to Power is a Dragon Ball movie, but you know, same thing. Awesome, really cool movie. Very well done. Very but let's, before I continue to ramble on, let's just give it to my number one pick, and that has to be Wrath of the Dragon. Dragon Ball Z, Wrath of the Dragon is a badass fucking movie. And it also is one of those movies that doesn't have Goku be the main hero of the story. Specifically, the main hero is kind of like, tr it's kind of more of a Trunks and Tampion story. It's more of like their relationship together. It's more of a Trunks story, basically, essentially. You know, Trunks is alone, you know, because he doesn't have like a big brother like Goten. And, you know, he's, he's just, he's growing up and he wants to, you know, he needs someone his age, but who's a little older to like give him some guidance and stuff, like a brother, you know. So that's what I really like about it, because the majority of all the movies has Goku be the main hero, and they mainly focus in destruction of planets and the fighting, which is not a bad thing, but that's what they mainly focus in. This one is more of one of the m many movies that they eventually did that they had Goku be less and less in, but this is one that they did where, like, let's just have him be in there, but let's not, like, have him really do anything <laughs> until the end. And that's what they essentially do. And I also like it because it also shows Vegeta be a hero. You rarely see Vegeta ever do something hero. But this is a good representation right there because he saves people. He actually saves people. When do you ever see Vegeta save people? It's fucking awesome. It's definitely an awesome watch. And plus, I love the villain. The villain is not a warlord. He's not an alien. He's not a fucking psychotic Saiyan. He's not some creature who's pissed off at Goku. He's just a fucking monster. He's a fucking creature. He's basically the Dragon Ball Z equivalent of a Godzilla. And I just love creature features. So I fucking love the villain. It's just an awesome monster. He doesn't have any powers specifically other than that transporting smoke thing and like super strength. But and like breathing fire. Very Godzilla-like. But awesome, awesome creature design. I know a lot of people have problems with it and they like prefer, you know, whatever. I love it. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking cool and badass. This movie is really cool. And just like I said with Dead Zone and Tree of Might, I, I also like the consensus. There are stories that you can almost consider to be like the like canon. You know? They're just very good. And I love the ending. The ending is very fucking good. But that's going to be it. That's my top five of Dragon Ball Z best movies. I hope you enjoyed. I definitely have a lot more top five picks. This one's a little sketchy. I'm sorry that I was rambling. You know, this this video is very subjective. It's very subjective. Obviously, not a lot of people are going to agree with my list. But what is your list? What's your top five pick 
of the best Dragon Ball Z movies. I'd love to hear if you have any differences with anything I stated. Please feel free to comment. And that's been John Joker 12. I hope you.